The work 11. Can I pay with stamps? Can I pay with stamps? She asked. Rummaging in her grimy purse and extracting an assortment of coins and stamps to pay for the two kippers and the loaf of bread on the counter of the village store. I stood behind her, but not too close, she stank. Her gray hair was matted, and she wore filthy, tattered clothing. Her ankles were bare and her feet were thrust into a pair of old army boots. We all knew her. Her name was Miss Shafi and she lived with her family of stray cats in a tumble-down shack just outside the village. The windows were broken and there were holes in the roof. She spoke to no one, except when she went to the store. Everyone avoided her. At school we used to speculate about her. She was about the only interesting thing there was to talk about. In those days there was no TV and not much entertainment. Mickey Stone claimed she was a witch. He'd seen her on the roof one night surrounded by black cats. Annie Jarvis said she'd escaped from the loony bin in Boxworth. Jim Crouch said she was an Indian princess, thrown out by her father. But when I asked my mother who she really was, she glared at me. You mind your own business. She's got nothing to do with us. Stay away from her, there's already been enough trouble. Not long afterwards, as I was passing her shack, I saw her lying by her door. Groaning. I overcame my disgust and helped her to stand and hobble back into the room. The stench was overpowering. I helped her to her bed, a pile of filthy blankets. Cup of tea, she said. Pointing to an old paraffin stove. I boiled the kettle and made her some tea. She took the cracked mug from me and spooned in condensed milk from a tin. Thank you, dear. I'm all right now. You'd better get home now. Don't say anything to your mom, will you? While leaving, I noticed a wedding photograph above the fireplace, the only decoration in the room. The young bride was Miss Shafi, no doubt about it. I did not recognize the groom. They looked very much in love. One rainy Sunday afternoon a month later, I was looking through some old photographs my mother kept in a box under the stairs. It was like a museum of family history. The yellowing faces of Victorian uncles and aunts, of my parents when they were young, stared at me from the pages of the albums. I was just putting them away when a photograph slipped out nom the back cover of one of them. My heart suddenly beat faster. It was the same picture I had seen at Miss Shafi's. On the back it said, Sadie and Jack, the 20th of May 1900. I realized it was Uncle Jack, my mother's brother, who had emigrated to Australia. I remembered my father once calling him, a rat who left his wife for the barmaid. Was his wife Miss Shafi? Why had he left her? I slipped the photograph back and put the album away. I never dared ask my mother the questions which burned on my tongue. I am as old now as Miss Shafi was then. I live alone too, but not in a shack. Unlike her, I never married, and I don't pay for my shopping with stamps.